The pandemic has affected revenue, with the ADA reporting that patient volume has leveled off at about 80% of pre-pandemic levels. Many dental professionals then are now launching other businesses both inside and outside of dentistry to supplement their income. But how do you get started? Chris Panabianco, Chief Marketing Officer at Bankers Healthcare Group, is with us to offer some advice for dentists who have ambitions as entrepreneurs too. Chris, thanks for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Glad to be here. Okay, great. And can you start with a snapshot of the financial situation that dentists are facing today? Sure. And as a lender that works specifically with healthcare professionals and dentists, we've provided over $1.5 billion in the last 19 years to different dental professionals. We saw it firsthand. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had about 1,357 of our customers come in that mm -hmm. were dentists and ask for help. Uh, they went on loan modifications. And you know we know that they were the heaviest of all healthcare professionals impacted. I believe at the time it was about 97% mm -hmm. of offices were closed. So we immediately shifted into a customer service role and wanted to work with our professionals because they've had such great payment history with us and they've been a big part of the growth of BHG that we wanted to work with them. And you know again, we see that you know they are now back in their chairs, as you said, and right now it's amazing. We have zero outstanding loan modifications. So everyone that has gone on a modification is now back full paying. And we're talking to the customers. We're asking them how things are going and they're working. You know, as you've said over the times we've spoken, these are hardworking professionals and they are definitely in there working longer hours, trying to balance their fear and hesitancy of the patients coming in. But the one key is you touched on was that they're also exploring new ways to supplement their income in the event that something like this happens again. Okay, and uh, since they are oral health professionals, how can they tap that expertise to look into these other opportunities? Yeah, you know, there's a story in the USA Today and it reported that dentists are becoming more likely to embrace these new avenues of doing business. You know, they're looking for new revenue opportunities within the, the industry and also outside. You know, they're looking at being consultants for oral surgery centers. There's the private teledentistry, uh, which is amazing. My dentist did that twice uh, as one of my children and I did. We had uh, a dental pain uh, or pain with one of our teeth. So they're, they're moving out to that. They're going and insurance firms are coming after them. They're looking for consultants. There's clinical research. Uh, dental insur insurance consulting, as I said, and then the equipment sales side too. And we've even seen a couple of our customers start to write a book. So we know that within the industry, it's there. On the outside, they're looking at real estate uh, investments, uh, as we all have seen what the stock market has done. So there's a lot of opportunity and we're seeing them become more and more uh, fluent in, the, in, that, in those opportunities. Okay, and can you talk a little bit more about those real estate opportunities? Many dentists might lease or rent their office space right now. And just thinking long-term, is ownership a better option for them? Well, I can tell you this, if it's anything like our office that uh, we have in New York City, we've talked to the tenants and prices are going to come down. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, as, as more people have adjusted to this work from home, I do believe that in my experience that the, the commercial space is a the square footage, uh, the cost per foot is going to go down. Uh, mm -hmm. People just aren't going back. A lot of businesses have shifted, like you and I talked about before we before we started here. You know, mm -hmm. we're all working from home, so I would see that you know now might be a good time to start exploring or setting yourself up to purchase the building you're in or purchase additional space that you can so you can expand. And also getting back to that idea of being a, a dental consultant, do you see dentists connecting with, say, dental manufacturers or uh, other similar companies in that yeah, space? Definitely. Practice management companies as well? Yeah, definitely. I think the practice management is a huge uh, side. You know, people are looking at their practice and seeing how they can run it more efficiently. But mm -hmm. who knows better than a practitioner that's been running uh, their own practice or been a part of a big successful practice? Uh, mm -hmm. The teaching side. You know, as, as students are coming on and going back to school, the virtual side of uh, learning uh, is happening. So it's a big opportunity there uh, as well. And again, the manufacturers are looking for people to come in and teach uh, or to sell their product, to be a spokesperson. So it's a great opportunity if you're comfortable in front of the camera, if you're comfortable with the research side or the teaching side to get out and explore that opportunity. 
So this might be a good time for dentists to get into the continuing education side of things, become those lecturers, become those webinar hosts that they've seen so often as students themselves. Definitely. And they're probably much better in front of a camera than I am. Uh, so I, I think there's a, a booming business. And again, our, our entire society has shifted, you know, mm -hmm. from even down to the basics. We all have children. My children are, have been completely remote. Uh, teachers are having to adjust. My, my nieces and nephews are in college. Everything's remote. So the dental uh, industry and the education side is great. And then the continuing education, as you said, Richard, um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big business and people just aren't going to pack you know, the greater New York dental uh, show, that those, those type of things aren't going to happen right now. So the shift is on. People are very flexible and they've been really great adapting to technology and how to use it. And the CME is just a definite home run for any practitioner that wants to get into that line of business. Okay. And regardless of what field that dentists might go into as, as, um, as an entrepreneur or as an educator or as a consultant or anything really, what are some of the benefits of becoming their own boss, so to speak? Sure. It's a little daunting at first, it may be, but there's a lot of benefits, you know, supplementing your income, you can multiply and diversify your income streams, given that you have now more control. And a lot of these, as we talked about, you don't have to leave the office. So mm -hmm. if you've got time in between appointments or, you know, your schedule is a little bit light, you can do it right there. Uh, you know, again, you're also controlling your operations, your finances, all of it's under your control, depending mm -hmm. on what you pursue, whether it's in the dental industry or not, you get to decide what you charge, what investments you're making, and then really what risks are you willing to take all while reaping those benefits. And the other piece too, that I look at, and it's something I've thought long and hard about, you can pursue a passion or a personal interest mm -hmm. that you may have been on the sidelines for because of the day-to-day. Uh, it's really opening up that opportunity to really explore your passion. Mm -hmm. So are you seeing dentists maybe pursue things that are completely outside of dentistry, maybe setting up a little Etsy shop or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I wish I had paid attention. My wife told me uh, at the beginning of this, you know, put your money into Etsy. And if you follow the stock market at all, that is mm -hmm. one platform that's taken off uh, mm -hmm. fivefold. Uh, but, you know, again, I, I think you're, you're seeing that there are passion projects you know, some people are carpenters. Uh, one of our, as I mentioned earlier, one of our customers is writing a book. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're seeing a lot more of that. But again, dentists are smart. They're sticking to what they know. And mm -hmm. they're also leveraging that, that skill into something that can turn a profit and really supplement so that now as things start to get back, as you said, where, mm -hmm. you know, 80% of their book is coming back in their patient flow, they're setting themselves ahead in the event that we get around to of coronavirus or it may accelerate their dream to retire earlier. I'm not really sure what they want to do, but mm -hmm. we've heard great success. I haven't heard a lot of negative towards that. Okay. And for those who might be inspired now to follow these um, dreams of being an entrepreneur or follow that passion, what's step one? What do they need to do to get started? Yeah. Number one is have a plan. You really mm -hmm. need to sit down and evaluate what do you want to pursue? Does it align, align with your time, your passion, your goals? Mm -hmm. What does that plan look like once it's on paper? And then if it's yeah, if the answers are yes, then mm -hmm. you need to understand how do I get there? Do I need money for that? Is it, you know, something that's going to cost me something? And if you need a loan, why? A business loan, it's not only going to provide you the funding to help get your idea off the ground, but it can also provide you that cushion of funding as you work through to establish your business so that you're covering ongoing and unexpected costs you're offsetting some of that time commitment to start this business, or if you have to take a few less patients, or if you have to cut into that workday. Uh, so it really can help that cash flow. It can give you that emergency cash fund to allow you to do that. But it all starts with the plan and understanding what the time and costs are to that plan. And of course, that financing is so important. You can't launch anything without capital. So what are some of the options that are available for dentists who need that initial startup money? Sure. I would say right now, you know, lenders and loan solutions vary. So I would suggest do your research. Mm -hmm. There are key differences in the different types of products and qualification uh, requirements, what the repayment terms are, the speed of funding. You know, mm -hmm. some of these features you should consider in a partner uh, are longer repayment terms. Obviously, right now, we mm -hmm. want to make sure you have the lowest monthly payment possible so that it frees up that cash to go out and create uh, these opportunities. 
that affordable monthly payment is something that we talk to our customers about. Um, you know, you don't want the hard inquiry on or the impact to your credit score. And you want to get these funds fast so you can go out and test the waters. Mm -hmm. um, you can use a personal loan uh, if you are doing uh, through your business or as a DBA, uh, you can do a business loan. Um, there are some SBA loans, depending on how large of the opportunity you want to take advantage of. So really, I would suggest doing your research, finding out what, what your goals are and match that to your lender. Okay. And considering just the volume of businesses and people who signed up for recent government relief programs like the PPP and others, what's the lending market like right now? Are there plenty of opportunities for dentists to get those loans and get that capital? Yeah, the government is coming out with some aggressive programs. There's a Main Street program. As you know, PP, uh, PPP uh, was conducted. Now you're looking at the loan forgiveness. Uh, a lot of people that we've spoken with that have taken those PPP loans, they're coming up to the end of the, the, the loan that they've taken. Mm -hmm. uh, the money is starting to run out. Some lenders have tightened uh, their, their uh, lending policies. Mm -hmm. um, we are not one of them. Uh, fortunately, we have continued uh, as we've, we've known this market. You know, Dennis, or we, in 2001, we started lending to Dennis and that was how we built our business. So we've, we've kept, if anything, we're looking at extending our terms uh, providing more money and doing it in a hassle-free manner. Um, but again, I would do your research, find someone you're comfortable with. Uh, there are a lot of lenders out there. It's just the one that's right for you, finding the solution that fits your needs. And considering how tumultuous the past few months have been, what impact will credit have on many of these loan decisions? Has that yeah. been an issue? Yeah, credit, definitely. I think right now with all the government programs and you know, we've seen uh, it, for any of the, the news that you've watched, people have saved at record amounts. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not taking out a lot of loans. They're, they're trying to be smart with their money. But if you have, you know, we want to we wanna work with you and we are going to look at your credit. Every mm -hmm. lender looks at the credit. That's a big part of how we work. But it's really the lender that looks beyond just a credit score and mm -hmm. looks at the whole picture, uh, looks at your, your business or you as a person. Uh, as a dental professional and kind of looks at your income, uh, how your spending habits have been and your saving habits. I think there's a lot of different ways you can look at it, but credit does come into play with the majority of lenders. Mm -hmm. So I would get that in order first, you know, make sure that you've got things paid off or that your, your, your finances are in check and come to the table uh, knowing what your snapshot looks like mm -hmm. so that you can make a more informed decision. Okay. And uh, with that plan in place and that financing in hand or underway, what would the following steps be in putting together that, uh, that dream and making it a reality? Yeah, I think the, the big thing is if you're, if you're searching for it and you put the time in, I mm -hmm. think there's never been a better time to consider the opportunity of a side business mm -hmm. uh, or to create that new revenue, revenue stream. I would seek out opportunities that resonate with you both professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. And then when you're finding that lender, Come to the table ready, um, know how much, what your monthly payments could be, what you can afford, and mm -hmm. then work towards that. Um, it's very important that you know what's going to fit you uh, and your, your budget uh, and where you're going with this new business and how it affects and impacts your current profession and your current book of business as the dental professional. Okay, and just one more question. Any final pieces of advice uh, ranging from financing to getting started to getting finished. And when you're finally about to make that launch and announce to the world, here's your business. Well, what, what other advice do you have for these entrepreneurs? I think the big thing is really being confident in yourself uh, mm -hmm. and not be afraid to take that chance and go out and follow that passion to create that, that new uh, line of revenue for yourself and mm -hmm. to be confident that there are lenders out there that want to help you. The second thing would be really to understand how are you gonna communicate that? So have an idea of how you're gonna promote yourself, have an idea, the marketing side of what I do uh, is really get active on social media. LinkedIn is a great area for you to focus. You've got your business plan, you've got your financing in place. Now you gotta tell the world, LinkedIn's great. Get active, start a blog, uh, start to talk about the services you're gonna offer, the new line of business, and then invite people, participate with them comment on other people's posts and really start a one-to-one -one conversation, you know, maybe potentially seek out podcasts 
anyone in an in industry you're going into uh, that you admire or that has a good following, reach out, tell them you enjoy their podcast and you'd love, you have a new line of business and you'd love to join. There's some really great dental focused uh, podcasts and there's great people out there that would love to spread that message and then reciprocate. Uh, and I think if you do those things, you get the plan, you know what you can do, you understand your timing, you get the financing in place, and then you start to speak about this passion or about this new business, you're going to do great. Great. And with that, um, I think you've uh, probably inspired many of our viewers right now to go out and uh, seek those other passions and give something new a try. Excellent. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate you having me on again. And uh, again, I'm available if anybody has any questions. Uh, mm -hmm. We've shortened my email address this time. It's cp at bhg-inc.com. I'd love to chat with any of your listeners. Great. Thanks again. And we'll, we'll be in touch again soon. Thanks. Thanks and have a great day.